All right, so where we left off, I have a PSD that I'm working on in PhotoP where I'm digitally inking with my stylus and tablet on top of my sketch at a high resolution. And I like the way that's going, but I just showed you that I also inked it on tracing paper with a Sharpie, which has some advantages. You know, speaking as someone that does a lot of editorial cartoons for newspapers, sometimes it's nice to ink by hand just because it simplifies things. It makes things really graphic and clear. But I now need to take this and clean it up to turn it into clean line art. So if I open up PhotoP, I'll have another instance of it here. I'm going to bring that sketch in. So if you decide to ink it by hand and we scan it at 600 pixels per inch, it's so high because my image size is actually quite low because my original drawing was pretty small. So less than three by three inches at 600 pixels per inch. So now how can I clean this up? Well, I, I always recommend making a duplicate. So command J, then go to image adjustments and play with the levels. Right? The levels allow you to really brighten the whites. So you're going to push the white slider way past the peak on the right side of the histogram. That's going to clear out all that texture from the tracing paper that's scanned. Then I'm going to go on the black side and push the darks darker, darker, darker. Why are they getting lighter? Oh, I'm, that was limiting. Sorry, up here. Darker, darker, darker. And then you got to zoom in and you got to find those midtones, right? That's this gray slider. And you want the midtones to be fairly dark, but not so dark that they cast a shadow, right? So you're basically just trying to clean it up as best you can. About like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, then we have to get rid of the white. And this is what I like to do. I like to do my magic wand and then select with contiguous turned off all the white, right? With no feather, with zero feather. Then go to select inverse. So it selects everything that isn't white and then duplicate, command J. And now I have line art on its own. But the problem is this line art might have some really saturated kind of color to it in the midtones. So then I can double click it and I can click on color overlay and fill that all with black. Just like that. And if there's any debris I need to clean up like this, I just use my lasso. And I get rid of it. One last thing I can do, just to, to clean up the bumpiness of it a little bit, is I can select all the empty space with my magic wand with contiguous turned off. And I can click on refine edge, if you remember this. And then I can give it a slight border, a border of three, for instance, which is the default. Then say OK. And now I can select all of that layer, which is a little border outline of everything with my magic wand. Actually, I'll select the empty space and then I'll say select inverse. And then that becomes a way I can trim this art. So what do I mean? Whoops, wrong layer. Just by hitting delete, you see how that kind of trimmed it and cleaned it a little bit from what it was before. But sometimes it trims a little bit more than you want, like in these flies wings. So then I can go back to this layer or this layer even. and I can get those flies wings back. So it's all just using your compositing skills. Oh, 
Oh, let's turn on contiguous, sorry. And I'm going to get some of this line art back. Like that. Then I can always trim it. I can use my lasso. But you'll see the difference in the line quality between this type of digital inking, which is using the tablet, and this type of digital inking, which is using a regular pen and then cleaning it up in the computer. It's going to be a little bit bumpier. They're both going to turn into vectors just fine. But this is a little bit more graphic, right? A little bit sloppier. This allows it to be a little bit cleaner. And so you can choose. Once you've done that, I ask you to save this as a PNG file. So I'm going to export it with the background turned off as a PNG, so it has no background. Save it. It's going to go to Downloads. And then I'm also going to save this one once I'm done inking it as a PNG file. And right now, I'm doing my image, but let's see. Let's just finish it up. Some little stippled ash coming from the cigarette. And then how do I do the check mark? I'm going to make it smoother. Now I'm going to show you one thing. With digital inking, unlike traditional inking, sometimes you're at a really difficult angle, right? So that worked okay. But if I use the hand tool at the bottom and then go down to the rotate view option, I can rotate my canvas just temporarily to help with my my inking. So it's a lot easier to do that curve when it's at an angle. And then I can use that rotate hand tool again in order to find a curve for inking this that I like better. Just like in traditional inking where you can move the paper. And then to get it on the right axis again, you just double click the tool and it will straighten it back out. Oops. Then I go back to my brush, and I'm going to finish up. And if it's going a little slow for you, just take your smooth options down a bit. It will speed it up. Now, the only full bleed inking I have is in the cigarette ash where it gets totally black. Because anywhere it gets totally black, you're not going to be able to do traditional digital coloring. It's going to be covered with black because digital coloring happens behind the line art, not on top of it. But you could do special effects and color holds if you wanted to on top of it. Now, another big difference between digital inking and traditional inking is that I can start and stop here, and then I can always just go back and redo a stroke. In traditional inking, especially with a permanent black pen, you only get one shot, and then you need, traditionally, you would need white out or what's called graphic white paint to fix mistakes. But of course, we're bringing it all into the computer anyway. 
So you could always fix those mistakes after the fact as well. Okay, but that looks pretty good. And then if there's little seams, that's why I always make it pressure sensitive. Like I can just fill this in really lightly. And if there's something I want to trim, I just use my lasso with no feather. And I just trim it out. All right. So I've got my line art. I'm going to turn my sketch off. I've got that line art and I've got this line art. You can kind of see the difference between them. So I'm going to save this as a PNG. What we're trying to do today is to get our sketch posted to Canvas and then get clean black line art. So I'm going to export this as a PNG with no background. And I'm going to call this my raster digital line art. Whereas my other one is traditional. Okay, let's put it all into my assignment 5 folder which I have open so many times, my goodness. So out of Photopea, of course, they go to Downloads, pull them out of Downloads. Remember, these are at high resolutions, whether it's from a high resolution scan or from a high resolution file that you opened in Photopea. Okay, so of these two types of line art, which one should I turn into a vector or should I turn them both into a vector so you can see the differences? Yeah, so this one's a little cleaner. It's the one I like. I was able to have more fun with variation in it just because I could get in smaller. There's something I like about the cigarette here. But let's see. So how do we turn these into vectors? It's just like when we brought our logo black shapes. Let's bring the messier one, this one. Nope, that's the other one. <laughs> Let's bring the messier one in first because one advantage to vectorizing something is that it really cleans it up. Now in the assignment, remember this used to be free, it's no longer free, but you can still use this. Ah, keep opening the wrong one. Here it is. So in the assignment, there we go. It gives you a link to try vectorizing. It just, it doesn't let you save it for free anymore. But it's a really helpful tool to see how your work translates as a vector, even if it's a color photograph, right? So if I take, the, ah, that's not it the messier one and bring it in. Let's see how it translates to vector line art. Because this is what Adobe Illustrator will do and with the benefit that Adobe Illustrator will let us save it as an EPS and as an SVG file. And look how much that cleaned it up. So now this is a vector. It did used to look like that, super bumpy, right? But as a vector, really, really clean. And then if I wanted to download it, I just have to subscribe. So let's try, see if we can get a good result in the program we pay for, which is Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to right click on it and then open it with Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> it's so small. I'm going to click on it with the large selection tool, hold down shift and option just to grow it a little bit, but still have it fit on the artboard, right? Like that. Then I'm going to click on it, go to properties, click on image trace and click on black and white logo. And immediately you see how it cleans it up. Now I don't want this white. I want just black shapes, just like we did for our logo. So I click on the advanced options. I make sure.